You see there the growing memorial for Constable Heidi Stevenson outside her RCMP detachment in Enfield, Nova Scotia. People stopped by all day yesterday to leave flowers, to sign the flag, to give thanks for her service and her sacrifice. The detachment sign out front, there you see it, end of watch. Constable Stevenson touched so many lives over the course of 23 years on the force, including the life of a young woman now, a little girl then, far across the Atlantic. What a story we have to share with you this morning. I want to introduce you to Mara. There you're going to see Mara in just a second. Mara Vinke, who's in Utrecht, Netherlands this morning. Mara, welcome to our program. We're just delighted to meet you today. Good morning. Thank you. Back in the year 2000, so 20 years ago, in Appledorn, which is a, a Dutch city, which means an awful lot to Canadians, as Canadians liberated that community um, 75 years ago, in fact. We'll talk about that history, but we know about Appledorn. You were a little girl. And tell me about what happened at Appledorn in the year 2000 and how you met Constable Stevenson. Yeah, so I'll, I first of all have to thank my dad for that because my father was so involved with all the commemorative events that he would take me everywhere. And because of him taking me everywhere, I actually met her because she was one of the RCMPs visiting the town to celebrate the liberation with us. It was an anniversary year, 2000, so there were many veterans um, attending too. But I was drawn to somebody else, and that somebody else was Heidi, who was the only female RCMP there. And we don't have anything like RCMPs here in Netherlands. So I was just amazed by this superhero who was wearing that bright red, and she had all eye for me. She sat down and talked to me like I was an adult, which to a kid means a ton. So, yeah. This is just the most beautiful picture. You at six and Constable Stevenson in the full red surge. And I understand it wasn't just that one meeting. You, you would see her periodically because your father was involved in the anniversary commemorations, right? Yeah, that is correct. I saw her at several occasions in several places, but she was always the same to me. She saw me and t took time to talk to me, even though we didn't even speak the same language, but she managed with her energy and um, sat down on eye level and had so much attention, which is something that I really appreciate now even more than then. That photo, what did you do with it? Well, um, this photo is just a photo of the moment, but if you look closely, you can see that I'm actually holding a piece of paper in my hand, and that is a memento that she gave me. It was her card with her picture on it, and as soon as I got home, I hung the card on a corkboard in my room, and it stayed there um, well into my teenage years as a source of inspiration because I thought that she was just so cool to me. She was a superhero, and I looked at her for probably most days of my life so far. Isn't that incredible? Inspired you for, for decades. What it was, I mean, you used the word cool and you said she was a, like a superhero to you, but what do you think it was about her particularly that never left your mind, that you never forgot? I think the fact that she took complete time and complete attention. I think as a kid, you are often treated as a kid by adults, but she was nothing like that. She totally saw me, totally took me seriously. And it's, it's, it's a way of taking people seriously that I'll, I'll try to do in my lifetime, even for just a bit of what she's done to me. Um, and she was, she was very joyful. I think other colleagues, former colleagues, friends, other people near her will probably tell you the same, that she just had this pure joy and, and, and this, this aura of joy around her. It was just radiating. And, and I think that drew me, to, drew me to her. So what were your thoughts then, Mara, upon learning of her passing and the circumstances of her death? That, that was surreal. I think it was surreal for me, as I, I, I bet it was surreal for so many who heard that news. Um, I, at first, it was just a news message. Um, I actually heard it aloud on the Google Home thing, and it mentioned a shooting in Canada, which already hit home with me because I have a special bond with Canada, like many people from Appledorn. Um, but I did not expect to, anybody to be involved that I knew. And then later I heard from her former colleague, Mark Kay, who is a family friend still, that she was 
actually there and that she was hit and that's when it completely stopped being real for me for a little bit and then I decided I should share what a light she's been to me with her family and her loved ones. We're so glad you did. What a beautiful tribute that you've paid from there. You know, I was thinking, as I was looking at the calendars, Mara, it was 75 years ago on April the 17th, so we're the 21st right now, 75 years ago plus four days, that the Canadian Army liberated Appledorn and our countries have had this connection ever since. And then you have this extra special connection with a special Canadian. And we're so thankful that you told us about it today. Thank you very much, Mara. I appreciate meeting you. You're welcome.